Hey, what's up, guys? Tuki here, back again with another episode of my Hartford Whalers franchise mode series right here on NHL 18. And today, well, today, we sim through the rest of this season. We will hopefully make the playoffs. And I say hopefully. I mean, you can look at the standing. It's pretty close. I say hopefully because I put some thought into it. And tell me if you've heard this before. This is it. Except this time I mean it. This is it, guys. This this will be the last episode of the Hartford Whalers franchise mode series. I talked about with the Habs finale, ripping off the band-aid, just being done with it. That with this series, there isn't going to be a right time to end it, as I've talked about. We win a cup. People are going to want to keep going. The bottom line is... We have a stacked team right now. Yes, it would be nice to see how all of these players progress. And I know, whenever I end up with a franchise-level player named Jesus, the series typically ends right around that point. But if you think about it, right? If you think about it, if a GM can't win a cup with this team, more than likely, that GM would be fired. Especially when you consider the talent level on this team. So many young players... The, at the very least, if you're thinking of it from that way, we would be setting up the next GM of this team very, very well. Because that GM would have some incredible talent on their team. But the fact is, this series, guys, has been going since September. It is the morning of January 24th as I am recording this. Let's end this. Goon Squad's going well. We'll start up a new series. The hope is that we are able to win a cup on the way out. So that is what today's episode will be as you guys again get one final look at what this team currently is. Of course, Yerky Petrolinen in goal as it is. We have San Jose's first round pick and they only have 20 wins. We're playing them next. Like I said, there is no... Didn't even mean to hit the button there. There's no perfect time to end it. So we're just going to end it now. We're going to finish this season. Whatever happens, happens. And then that's the end. Maybe I'll continue it on Twitch as an unofficial deal. I don't know. But this is it. We'll end it with this episode. The comment section of this video, as we get Sammy Vatnin on waivers, no freaking way. The comment section of this video will be reserved for you guys being able to to list up who you think should be in the running for Hall of Fame voting. So there will be another episode where the polls are attached uh, in the description, and then one more after that where I reveal the results of the polls and whether or not players have made it to the Hall of Fame. So while this is the true finale, there will be no other progression beyond this video. There will still technically be two other videos to follow after this. So the Sims started off very well. We've now lost four straight. Make it five straight games. Make it six. Can we go for seven against Minnesota, please? Wow, we started off so well, and now we've gone on a six-game losing streak. I'm wondering, okay, it's not going to sim the Minnesota game. Are we going to make the playoffs even at this rate? Okay, we've clinched a playoff spot. But we have the top wild card spot right now, and we're not going to move up because there's no way Colorado or Nashville will miss out or will screw up that badly at this point. So that's a nice promising start to this episode where we win a ton of games and then go on a six-game losing streak. We've now won three straight. We, <laughs> we lose six straight and then win four straight to end the year as we hit 50 wins, and again, we tied with Nashville in points, even if they, I mean, yeah, they have the tiebreaker already, even if they lose this. Uh, so we did well to screw ourselves out of one of those top spots. We are the wild card. I imagine we'll be playing, yeah, we're going to be playing the team in the Pacific Division as Colorado has clinched the conference. So let's take a look here at our stats from this season. Warren Dirksen did still finish as our leading scorer. Travis Sizek put up 63 points. Oh my god, Leidecker. 31 and 31, that's not too bad. Again, whether or not you blame it on the fact that Petrolinen's so good or Sizek's putting up points, it's decent. 
I still want a big performance from him in the playoffs, though. Lowry, 52. Kreider, 44. 43 there. 42 for Alt Schuler. It wasn't bad. It was a strong season. That should have been better. That losing streak at the end really didn't help. Petrolinum finishes with a 939 save percentage. Dustin Bartley didn't do as hot. 902 in 18 appearances. While some teams still have a game left to play. We'll take a look here. McDavid at 106 points. I guess it's an up year for scoring. It's probably for the best that we're not in the bracket or, you know, we're not in the same, like, I guess the line of sight of the Colorado Avalanche as they continue to look like one of the more dangerous teams in the league, if not the most dangerous team in the league. Uh, let's move forward that one day to get that confirmation. So there you go. The Avalanche finish with 112 points. I kind of don't even want to see who's in the Pacific. It's Vancouver. We're playing Vancouver in the first round. All right. Let's go ahead and get that confirmation then. Let's go ahead and see it. And I believe we made the playoffs as well at the AHL level. Cannot confirm that. I didn't look at the... No, we're playing Winnipeg. Excuse me? Did something change? We finished... Did... Wow, we finished above Nashville. I guess... Really? Even though they have one more win. Regulation overtime wins are tied. I guess because we have one fewer loss, but if you factor in uh, OTLs, we don't. And that's why I thought for sure we weren't going to have it. The wins and then the OTLs... All right, so we're playing Winnipeg in the first round instead. They finished with three more points than we did. I did not see that coming. Right, so let's take a look at the Winnipeg Jets lineup then. I guess we finished seventh in the league. Uh, the Carolina Hurricanes and the New York Rangers both on 120 points. And goals four per game. Uh, we were up there, actually, at a 2.73. Goals against was a 2.04, which was the second lowest in the league, uh, just above Vancouver. So maybe we dodged a bullet with Vancouver giving up. I mean, look at the separation, though, between uh, us, Vancouver, and the Rangers, who finished with how many points? 120? So that goes to show the defense and goaltending uh, you know, ability of both teams. Our power play was at 19.7%. Uh, which was mid-table, and our penalty kill was higher up, top 10 in the league. Not too bad. A little bit surprising that our power play was that poor. We did have to change it up to accommodate some extra forwards, but even then, I'm a little bit surprised. And you know what, actually, here, before we even take a look at the Jets lineup... I do wonder if going best lines to update the power play would be worth it, so I am going to do that. And the team stays the same. So we'll see how that works out. It actually puts Gostad in on the power play, which is kind of surprising and probably not for the best, but since we don't really have to care too much about morale anymore, we might as well just ice the best team we possibly can and just go for it. Again, that is the goal. We're going for it. This has to be the year. We already have one cup to our credit. Can we add a second one today? Let's take a look at the Winnipeg Jets, not the Washington Capitals. Top line of Nikita Sherback with Mark Shifley and Nikolai Ellers. Second line of Kyle Connor, Alexander Wenberg, and Patrick Line. Line is on the second line, okay. Tyler Toffoli is with Michael Spachek and Julian Oshie, former 20th overall selection. Fourth line is Phil DeGiuseppe, Brock Dolan, and Ned Pacioretty. No comment. Defense is Shea Theodore with Jacob Truba. Josh Morrissey with Dmitry Korobov. Dale Larson. He was a 21st overall selection. And Rene DeRocher. Who was undrafted. No comment. Their goaltender is 82 overall Connor Hellebuck. Who had a 923 save percentage. You know what? I'm just going to come right out and say it. How the hell? How the hell? Did they finish ahead of us in the standings? 
And if we lose this series, I will never feel more justified than ending the series as a whole. There is no excuse that we should not at least make it past Winnipeg. But we have had such bad luck in the playoffs lately. Here we go. The last journey, the last shot at winning a Stanley Cup. We've done it once in this series, but that's a sad note to think we only have one cup win between this and the Habs series so far. In NHL 18, on this channel, we have only won a single Stanley Cup, as opposed to how many in rebuilding Hockey Town last year alone, not to mention draft of glory. This needs to happen. We're on the road. Game one, first period, and that's a good start. McAllister and Preston Saugus with the goals. We were outshot, but we have the 2-0 lead. Second period, and that is that is what I like to see. Sizek and Lowry make it four. I'm going to treat this like I've been treating the playoffs in Goon Squad as of late because I'm simming throughout the entirety of the postseason in this episode we're just going to hit the A button unless it's an elimination game. So we're up 4 nothing heading into the third period, and we make it 6. Two goals in each of the three periods. 31 save shutout for Yerky Petrolinen. The two-goal performance from Travis Sizek, who I have to admit is already making me question my decision to end the series because he is shaping up to be one of the better offensive defensemen we have ever had. 6 nothing win in Game 1 on the road. I fully expect a comeback here from the Jets. Let's just, let's just leave it at that. I expect them to fight back in a big-time way here in Game 2. First period. And it's a goal apiece, Lashoff and Wenberg. About even in shots. Second period. Again, it's a goal apiece. Pressburg and Oshie. That sets up this third period. Will we head to Hartford with a 2-0 series lead? Or will we split the first two games on the road in Winnipeg? And we're going to overtime. This is a neck-and-neck neck game. We have blown the lead three times. It was 1-0, then 1-1. 2-1, then 2-2. It was 4-2, and now it's 4 all Heading into overtime. Let's do it. Overtime. We'll follow along as it goes. Are we going to blow the lead for a fourth time in this game? Or can we somehow avoid complete disaster? This would be one of the worst losses I think we would have ever seen on this channel. To have the lead three separate times. And we're going to have to wait until double overtime to find out. So you know the deal. You know the tagline. Don't blink. You might miss it. You probably will miss it because it's going to end quickly. Double overtime here in game two. Power play chance before the Jets is killed off. We get one of our own. And Travis freaking Sizek gets the OT winner. His third goal in two games. A three-point night for Lydecker. A two-point night for Lowry. Kyle Connor was also up there for stars of the game. We do avoid disaster. We put up 11 goals and outscored them 11-4 to over the first two games of this series. We take both games on the road. That is a strong start. The game two performance, not quite what we wanted it to be, but we got the W, and that's all that matters. Game three. Again, we're breezing through this just in case we have a lot of games. I hope we have a lot of games to get to. First period in Hartford, and we are down to nothing. Shareback and Kyle Connor with two early goals, two goals on eight shots. Not very, uh, not a very typical start from Yerky Petrolinen. Second period, and that is just what the doctor ordered. Jesus, Altshuler, Lucas Lydecker, and I think it's George Delisle. I can't remember his name. i got to be honest. I feel terrible about it. That sets up this third period. We're out shooting them. We're up by one. Can we get the insurance goals that we are going to need? Let's find out. Third period. And again, again, we're going to overtime. Kyle Connor with the goal. That sets up another overtime here in game three. The second of the series already. 
Will we see an early winner here? We're at least five minutes in. We have a power play opportunity that we cannot do anything with. Halfway through the overtime, can we take the 3-0 series lead or will the Winnipeg Jets get on the board in this series? We are going to double overtime again. My God. All right. It's just double OT again. No big deal, right? Again, don't blink. You might miss it. Ready, set, and we're off. Double overtime. Who's it gonna be? It's Delisle. It's Delisle. And we have a 3 nothing series lead on the Winnipeg Jets. And I was right. George, George Delisle. He is quite French. He's quite French and quite good at the ice hockey, which is what we needed him to be. The goal scoring is there thus far. The defense and goaltending outside of game one has been a little bit shaky as the Connecticut Whale didn't make the postseason, by the way. We are one win away from getting past the Winnipeg Jets. So let's go. First period of game four. And it's not as bad of a start as it could have been. Wenberg and Toffoli get the two uh, opening goals, the first two goals of this game. Altshuler gets a goal back for us, 2-1, despite us having them doubled up in shots. Second period, Line and Skinner, a goal each is 3-2 Winnipeg. As we enter the third period, we are either 15 minutes away as Gostad gets us on the board. Skinner adds another one. 27 seconds later, it's 4-3 to three with 10 minutes to go. We are either 7 minutes away from going back to Winnipeg or sealing our spot in the second round, and that is exactly what is going to happen. Maybe this team doesn't want the series to end. Maybe it doesn't as we sweep the Winnipeg Jets in the first round. Two goal night for Ron Skinner. Gord Gostad with a two point night as well. Petra Line and happy with the ice time. I'm happy with the performance. The goal scoring showed up 19 goals for us in four games. While the defense and goaltending wasn't quite where I wanted it to be, I will absolutely take the end results. Lucas Leidecker. Leading the way as I wanted him to. Seven points in those four games. You know what? Let's actually go to the uh, let's go to the edit lines menu instead. I kind of like getting a look at the stats from that perspective rather than looking uh, at the menu we were just on. So Leidecker again, two goals and five assists, shooting 20%. Alvin Lowry with five points, the six assists for Owen Kreider. So that's kind of what I expect. Light, I mean, I still, the two goals is all right. I imagine we're we're pretty efficient on the power play. But Leidecker being kind of the main guy on the line, Lowry chipping in with some goals here and there, Kreider just all assists, even though he is very much capable of putting up uh, goals. Second line, four points for Altshuler, three for Lashoff, two for Skinner. Wow, those were the only points of the round for Skinner. Uh, that third line didn't do a damn thing. We did just sweep a team despite our third line not doing anything, but that is very concerning. Very concerning, to the point where I know Skinner just put up two goals, but I'm going to swap him with Copeland. Yeah, I'm going to swap him with Copeland, and we'll keep Dirksen. Uh, Dirksen and Skinner should be a very, very solid combo on that third line. Six points for Sizek, the two for two Zalino. Three goals for George Delisle. 91 offensive awareness. He has a good wrist shot. The one goal for Preston Saugus. The third pairing struggled a little bit, but Gord Gostad had a fairly decent game. And then Yerky Petra line with a 921 save percentage. That's good. It's nothing elite level. But as I always say, we made it past the round. As I typically say, in favor of another team. As to why we shouldn't get cocky about like, oh, this is going to be an easy series because this player was underperforming. We did just sweep. The Winnipeg Jets, with our goaltender playing, oh god, with our goaltender playing well, not great as he typically can. Now the Colorado Avalanche, 
Went to seven games in the first round. I think they played Nashville. That's the only thing that makes sense. I don't... Oh, God. So it's Vegas and Edmonton. Vegas and Edmonton. Vancouver and Edmonton. And we are playing the Colorado Avalanche. How many times have we lost to the Colorado Avalanche? Oh, boy. They beat St. Louis in seven. Edmonton, Arizona went seven, and then Vancouver beat Nashville in six. We were the only sweep of the first round in either conference. Do we even need to look? Like, do we even need to look at the at the Colorado lineup at this point? We know it pretty well. Top line of Miko Rantanen, Tyson Jost, and Louis Coleco Vision. There is no answer for that line. At least we haven't had the answer yet. Keith Harding is on the second line with Albert Cahill and Robbie Fabry. Third line is Pavel Zaka with Christopher Ein and Benjamin Foss. Fourth line is Colin Goodbranson, George Burns, and Jakob Verana. Jacob Verana? I'm going with Jacob Verana. Defense, Clifford Hood with Colton Pareko. I mean, what happened, Colton? We used to be such good friends in the Vancouver series. Second pairing is Alexander Saprikin with the other Coleco, Willie Coleco Vision. Third pairing, Lucas Johansson and Eunice Brodeen. The goaltender, Stan Stillman, who is probably the reason why that series went seven. He did not have a very strong first round. To say the least. But as I just said, in favor of our goaltender. That doesn't mean this is going to be an easy series. Let's go. We're on the road to start game one in Colorado. First period. And it's a goal apiece to start. Ein and then with 37 seconds left, Eric Tuzzolino tied the game up. Second period. Verona. Gets the tiebreaker. We're trailing. Down in shots as well. Heading into the third. Can we turn it around? Or will we lose game one to begin this series? And that is exactly what is going to happen. Damn it. It it sucks because I don't want to sit here with the feeling of like, yep, Colorado, we're done. But no matter what we've done to our team... We just, I mean, Stan Stillman, 907 save percentage. Now he gets a 970. Like, Colorado has just been our kryptonite. I can only help but wonder how much success we would have found in this series had we started it a little bit later, or had roster or uh, division realignment been a thing at launch like it was supposed to be because we would have been in the Eastern Conference. Regardless, we have to... We have to make the most out of the hand we've been dealt. We lost game one. We can still take game two on the road to help neutralize that home ice advantage. First period of game two. And we get the opening goal. Warren Dirksen. All right. Dirksen is on the board under seven minutes into the period. We only had six shots, but we did score on one of them. Second period. Tyson Joes ties it. McAllister on the fourth line gets a goal back. Fifteen shots from our offense. 15. Yeah, we have a 2-1 lead, so I guess I can't be all that disappointed, but the fact that this offense only has 15 shots is heartbreaking. Third period. Can we hold on and win game two? Yes, we can. All right. McAllister's goal held up 36 saves for Petra Line in the 972 save percentage in the victory. Ralph McAllister with the game winning goal was your second star of the game and we're looking all right we at least took a game on the road to start this series let's see what we can do in game three as we head home to hartford let's do this i believe in this team i do whether or not i should we're about to find out game three first period and tyson jost gets the opening goal second period lowry ties it way to go alvin 21 shots to 14. Our offense is really stalling out. 
But we are tied. Heading into the final 20 minutes of regulation. Can we get the win? <sighs> Overtime again. Oh my god. Harding got the goal. Warren Dirksen tied it with 6.15 to go. That sets this up. Third. Third overtime? The third overtime, I think, so far. Unless, yeah, third overtime of this of this postseason run. Let's do it. Who will take the 2-1 series lead? Power play chance here for the Avs. That is killed off. Another power play chance for the Avs. That is killed off as well. You want to go for the hat trick of power plays, please? Why the hell not? And they didn't get it. And it might not have helped. Any I mean, it would have helped. Anyway, Lucas Leidecker gets the overtime winner is my point. 41 shots to 40. Leidecker gets the only one to matter at the end, aside from the other two shots that went in. 951 save percentage for, Petr uh, for Yerky Petroline and 39 saves. Two-point night for Lucas Leidecker. Again, I asked him to step up. And so far, so good. He has delivered, and we have at least proven to ourselves that we can win games against the Colorado Avalanche. We have the 2-1 series lead. Game four, still here in Hartford. Let's make the most of it. We have a chance to take that commanding 3-1 series lead. First period is not the result that we wanted. Cahill gets the lone goal. We outshot them. Didn't matter. Second period, holy hell. All right, that's that's solid. We were down 2-0, Robbie Fabry scored, and then the offense showed up. Tuzolino, less than a minute later, lash off, and then less than a minute later after that, Warren Dirksen, three goals in under two minutes. And that is what we call a momentum swing, ladies and gentlemen. 25 shots to 18. We have the lead heading into the third. The question is... Will we let this opportunity slip through our fingers? I hope not. Third period. Holy hell, I saw that there were that many goals and I panicked, but we got the W. Harding made it, what, a 3-2? A yeah, that's what he did. Harding made it a 3-3 game. Sizek and Altshuler made it 5-3. Cahill made it 5-4. And then McAllister... With the empty net goal at the end. 6-4 final. Crazy amount of goals in that game. Three goals in the second and third period alone. The Colorado Avalanche get all three representatives in the three stars of the game. But they lost. And that's what, that's what matters. That's what's important. We have a 3-1 series lead on the team that has given us so many problems over the years. We have three opportunities to close this out, but one game at a time. Let's end it right here and right now. Game five, back in Colorado. Come on. This, this is it. We can do this. Let's finally overcome the avalanche and make the most of it. First period of game five. Oh my God. Is this the year, boys? Is this the year? Lash off, Skinner, and Tuzolino. We're up 3 0. Three goals on 12 shots to begin the game. That is as perfect of a start as you could have asked for. Second period is scoreless 22 shots to 18. It's an elimination game. We are 20 minutes away, although Coleco gets the goal to uh, make me a little bit less confident, though, of Skinner. Gets it back. They pulled Stillman. It's Evan Fitzpatrick between the pipes. And for that reason, I'm feeling good. Five minutes to go and we got it. Oh, we got it. Tuzolino with 6-11 left in the third period. And we just beat the Colorado Avalanche in five games. Is this our year? Is this finally the time? Did we finally find the right combination of players to make this happen? We have beaten. We have beaten the Colorado Avalanche. Two goal game from Skinner and Tuzolino. Three assist night from Altshuler. 
We swept the Winnipeg Jets. We have beaten the Colorado Avalanche, perhaps our biggest rival, in five games. Edmonton has a 3-2 series lead on Vancouver. We are halfway there. Eight wins down, eight to go. Taking a look at our lineup. Lydecker with a 10-point performance so far this postseason. Seven for Lowry, eight for Kreider. Just imagine if Kreider could start getting some goals. Altshuler with eight points, six for Lashoff. Only two for Robinson Copeland. Dirksen with five points, four for Shrimp, four for Skinner. Skinner only scores at, like, the end of, uh, of a run. I don't quite understand it. You know what I'm going to do, though? I'm going to put Dirksen up on the second line. The the Lions are doing all right, but there is an obvious room for improvement. I'm actually going to put Altshuler on the right-hand side there. And we'll see how that goes. I'm almost tempted to put Altshuler on the top line, but Kreider's at least getting assists. So we'll have Copeland, Shrimp, and Skinner. And the fourth line's done really well. McAllister has six points, three for Pressburg, two for Wagner. There's nobody I'd want to drop in the favor of McAllister, and he's done really well in that role. Like, I wouldn't want to drop Copeland all the way down to the fourth line, you know? That might be a little bit too much. But then again, I'm going with I'm going with who can get us there. It's not like Prestberg has a ton of points. You know, he has three points, whereas McAllister has six. So I'm giving McAllister the chance. He's going to get to work with Ron Skinner in this next Matchup. I don't want to mess up the lines too much. Uh, again, Sizek and Tuzolino are killing it. The second pairing is doing very well, plus minus wise. Third pairing, it's not tremendous, but it's good enough. And Yerky Petrolinen has a 927 save percentage. Eight wins down, eight to go. One team, one mission, win a Stanley Cup to cap off this series. Although, my God, if we win. You know, I know what the comment section is going to be. It's it's going to be you have to keep going. Who's it going to be? It's going to be Vancouver, right? It is. I was going to say, like, there's no way. There's no way it isn't going to Game 7. Vancouver comes back. They win two straight against the Oilers, at least two straight. We don't know if the Oilers had an even bigger advantage. We have home ice for this round. It is Hartford and Vancouver, Carolina, and Montreal, the final four. What are we up against? What do the Canucks look like at this point in time? Let's find out. The Vancouver Canucks. Oh my god. You know what I'm thinking. I know what you're thinking. Top line, Nail Yakupov, eight assists for his points. Randy Bowl was a seventh round pick. Get a look at Yakupov's stats as well. And Brock Besser. Again, this was before uh, Besser got the picture update. He has seven points. Second line, Sven Berchke with Bo Horvat and Ryan Strom. Their goaltending has to be spectacular. Tony Andrews, former Whaler, has five goals this postseason. He is with Sam Bennett. If you get a look at the numbers there, their third line might be the best line. Connor Roberts is there as well. The fourth line, John Quinville with Jarrett Anderson Dolan and Rupe Heinz. The defense is better than expected. Ruslan Grachev has 10 points. He is with Miro Heiskanen who has 7. 99 offensive awareness for Grachev. Second pairing is Ole Uolevi. 5 points are Uolevi. 5 points with Alexei Radulov. No points, but a former 7th round selection. The third pairing is Mario Boudreau. Who has 1 point with Jordan Schmaltz. No injuries, no healthy scratches. Who's the goaltender? Thatcher Demko, who has a 943. There's a couple of reasons as to why they've made it this far. 
Demko is absolutely one of them. We're halfway there. Let the series begin. We have home ice game one in Hartford for the first time this postseason. On paper, it's in our favor. That's indisputable. Undisputable. Indisputable. That'd be the correct word. I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my mind because we should win this, man. We should. First period of game one is scoreless. They outshot us 12 to 8. The second period is not scoreless. Bowl gets a goal, only for Alt Schuler to tie it up 56 seconds later. Third period. Let's see what happens. And there we go. Yes, Kreider. Kreider gets the game winning goal. Alt Schuler, the empty netter. We ended up out shooting them 37 to 28. 3 1 final on the board. And the Whalers take game one, a 27 save performance from Yerke Petrolinen, a two goal night from Alt Schuler. Demko was up there, but thankfully the goaltending duel went our way. The offense was there, and we took game one. Game two. Come on, game two. Defend home ice one game at a time. First period. Not the start we wanted. Ryan Strom gets the opening goal. Second period. That's all right. Lashoff ties it. 25 shots to 19 in their favor. But we're still very much in this game. Third period. It's anybody's game. That goes our way. Ron Skinner. Ron Skinner with the goal. He's scoring goals at big times. 2-1 final. They outshot us 38 to 31. The difference though, yet again, Yerky Petrolinen, a 9.73 save percentage. The game winning goal for Ron Skinner. We have successfully defended home ice Pressburg. Get over yourself, buddy. This is our last hurrah. Game three, the series shifts to Vancouver. Let's just stay on him. Come on, we can do this. We can do this. First period of game three, and it's a two goal, uh, two goal each split. Barchke, Shrimp, Barchke, Altshuler. 11 shots for us, 12 for them. We're tied at two on the scoreboard. Second period. Andrews, because of course you knew he wouldn't make, you knew he wouldn't be silent for this series. Andrews gives them the lead. We are going to sim the third period. Can we come back, or will the Canucks get on the board and start the trend of the home team winning? Yes, they will. Wow. I mean, two empty netters, so really it was a 4-3 final. Bennett made it 4-2. Lashoff got us back to within one. Berchke gets the hat trick on the empty netter. Andrews gets his second of the game as well on an empty netter. The Vancouver Canucks are not done yet, and again, the home team has yet to lose. Really, it was 4-3, so I'm not too distressed. Only our second loss of the postseason thus far. We're not going to make any changes. We're going to jump right into game four, and we'll see what happens. But I'm feeling I'm feeling all right still. First period of game four is scoreless. Ten shots to seven in their favor. Second period is another one goal piece split there, as we'll call it. Quinville and Shrimp. <clears throat> 20 shots to 17 in their favor. That sets up this third period. We will either take a 3-1 series lead, heading back to Hartford for game five, or the Canucks will tie this series and home ice uh, will become that much more important. Third period. Let's see what happens. Oh my god, we're going to overtime. I saw Lowry score. I thought the Berchke goal would be an empty netter. It wasn't. We are going to overtime. 34 shots to uh, 24 in their favor. Let's go. Overtime. Game four. Can we take that 3-1 series lead? No, we cannot. Quinville gets the goal. What was he, a fourth liner for them? And a 2-0 series lead has evaporated. The home team has yet to lose in this series. We lose... 
for the first. I mean, we lose two games in the same series for the first time this postseason. I'm still not going to make any changes, despite the fact we're on home ice here, and that's been a very good omen. You know, teams have been undefeated on home ice so far. They have won two straight games. They have momentum on their side. First period of Game 5 is scoreless. We outshot them 12-8. to eight. Second period, oh, we're getting ripped apart here. Quinville and Besser, we're down 2 to nothing. Third period, Dirksen got a goal back. Roberts gets the empty netter. The Vancouver Canucks become the first team to win a game on the road in this series. They have won three straight games. A 2-0 series lead has disappeared. And we face elimination in game six. And if this if this is the end, then I am definitely making the right choice in ending this series because I won't be able to stand looking at this team. <sighs> All right. All right, let's 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 figure this out. Let's figure this out. Two points, three points, two points. Pressburg, you might get called up. Six for Skinner, seven for Shrimp, eight for McAllister. Whoever has the most points is going on the higher lines. Eleven there, nine for Lashoff. So he stays. Dirksen is at 11 as well. And then Kreider. Only 10 points there. Can Altshuler play center? He can. It's going to be Dirksen, Altshuler, Kreider. 10, 9, and 9. There we go. That's our second line now. I'm going to go, who's the better center here? It's Lashoff. So we're going Lidecker, Lashoff, Lowry. And that is indeed confirmed. McAllister, Shrimp, and Skinner. Fourth line is going to be Prestberg, Wagner, and Copeland. The defense will stay the same. No one's really struggling. Petra Linen at a 930. Comes down to this. It comes down to this. The power play might not be like perfectly ideal, but it's still good enough that we should be putting up points. On paper, we have them beat in every way. I I even want to look at the overall rankings because or ratings because we have to have them beat in that aspect too. Somehow they have a 100 defense, which is garbage because our defense is better, so screw your overall ratings, EA. How does that make any sense? Our defense is, I mean, yeah, maybe our defense isn't better. Our top pair is better. I did forget that we kind of reworked the defense. I don't understand though how that's worthy of a 100 defense. So again, we have 90, 88, 85, two 80s and a 79. 90, 88, 85, two 80s and a 79. They have a 90 and 87. So yeah, our top pairing is better. Well, our top pairings are about equal, really. Second line, yeah, it's about equal, too, because it was, what, 85 and an 80? And it's an 83 to 2 for them. I mean, they have the slight edge as far as uh, third pairing goes. How that's a 100-rated defense, that makes no sense. It's ridiculous. How is that a 100-rated defense? That makes no sense whatsoever. Regardless... We have them beat. Defense is about equal. We have the goaltending advantage. We certainly have the offensive advantage. Yet we're trailing, and we need to win. We need to win to keep our series uh, to keep this se- uh, to keep this season our season or our, to keep this series our season and this series as a whole alive. Game six, first period. And we did get three goals, three unanswered to start the game. McAllister, Leidecker, and Wagner. We were up 3-0 within four minutes. Berchke, though, continues, uh, continued his hot pace. It's 3-1. We had three goals on 11 shots. Second period, that is exactly what we need, or what we needed. We know Demko was pulled. Sizek gets a goal. He's been a little bit quiet in this series. 
We have a 4-1 lead, four goals on 21 shots. We needed that. It needed to be 4-1 and not 3-2. Third period, it's an elimination game. We are 12 minutes away from forcing game seven back on home ice. Can we do it? Can we do it? Horvat gets one back. Five minutes to go. Yerky, you better shut the door here. We got it. We got it. We're still alive. Oh my god. 4-2 final. In game six. Kuhlman was their first star. He did very well coming in uh, for relief of Thatcher Demko. But the early damage was enough. We were able to survive. It's a 4-2 win in game six. And it comes down to this. We are one win away. The Eastern Conference Final also went to seven. We are one win away. Either the series ends here, or we are going to the Stanley Cup Final. No lineup changes necessary. We just won with that last second ditch effort combo. Here we go, guys. First period of game seven and Boudreaux gets the opening goal third pairing defenseman feels bad shots were basically even second period Tuzolino ties it 23 shots to 20 one goal apiece the final 20 minutes of regulation in this series here we go Oh my god, power play chance for the Canucks. Bo Horvat scores. They have more power play time. We're able to kill it off. Come on now. Come on, halfway through the third. We need a goal here, boys. We need a goal. Oh my god. 219 left. We're down 2-1. to one. And we're going to watch this. Because this is what it comes down to. Do we wear? Oh, I still love these jerseys. They're still beautiful. Let's wear the old school green or the blue. I'm going to say let's wear the blue. Come on. Let me change the game time, though, from 20 minutes. Guys, this, this might be it. Oh, I don't give a shit. I always do that. I hate quick settings. <laughs> They're right there. Let's drop that to five. I just want to make sure that it's on full sim. I don't know if it is. <sighs> this is it. it. Comes down to this. We have two minutes. Two minutes for our computers to score. Or it's all over. Oh my god. If we fucking lose to Vancouver after beating Colorado. Oh my god. Come on. We can do this. Please, please, please. We can do this. I was trying to get game audio up there. There we go. Come on. We're in the zone. Dirksen loses it. In front for Old Schuler. Thatcher fucking Demko. Oh my god. What a glove save from Demko. <sighs> Dirksen, Altshuler, and Kreider are out at the top line against top line. Face off is won by Bull. Heiskinen gets it back for Bull. It's now Yakupov. I like the red laces of our player there. Yakupov gets by, loses the puck. 55 seconds to go here. Kreider struggling. Yakupov saved by Petrolinen. And he'll hold. Oh my god. Come on, we can't. We can't. We cannot lose here, boys. Come on. <sighs> Let's go. I can't even skip this replay, guys. It just plays out. Alright, second line against this slightly tired top line for us. Lidecker, Lashoff, and Lowry. Defensive zone draw is one, then lost back to Bowl. Yakupov for Karachev. It's Bowl again. He sends it around. We're not going to be able to recover. Nobody went for it. Besser loses it for Lidecker. 
Sends it back down around for Lowry. 34 seconds to go. Whalers are struggling on the breakout. Lowry can't control the pass. Yakupov for Heiskanen. The shot is blocked. 25 to go. Yakupov for Ole Olivi. One-timer back is blocked from Lowry. Tuzelino recovers. 18 seconds to go. Petrolinen leaves the crease. Pass for Sizek. Can he shoot? He can't. He recovers. Lowry for Sizek. 10 seconds left. Delisle. Tuzelino. Leidecker back to the point. Shot for Lashoff. It's in. 5.8 to go. Oh my god. We're not done yet. Just when it looked like we were. Oh my god. Who got that? Alvin Lowry. His fifth of the postseason. We had no zone time. The shot here deflects Alvin Lowry in front. XL Center explodes. We're not done yet. Oh my god. We are going to overtime. His fifth of the postseason. Five seconds left. Berchke for Yolivi. Shot for Strom. Saved by Petrolinen. We are going to overtime in game seven. Absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. Alvin Lowry with a clutch goal. Again, I can't skip this guy since it's computer versus computer. Oh my god, the deflection that beats Demko with time winding down. Oh my god. Who will go on to play either Carolina or Montreal in the Stanley Cup Final? Let's go. Overtime. Overtime. I might as well just put this controller down on the floor in front of me. Come on. Top line versus, type, uh, versus top line, obviously, to start the period. Dirksen, Alt, Schuler, and Kreider. The draw is won. Sizek for Dirksen. Into the zone. Back up top. Terrible pass. Terrible play. Sizek not able to get it. Petrolinen leaves it behind for Sizek. To Zolino. Kreider carries. Having trouble. Finds Alt Schuler in the middle. Back for Kreider across the blue line. Kreider takes the shot. Rebound is there. But nobody is able to pounce on it. Vancouver across the blue line. Looking for space. There is space at the point. Bull shot deflected off of a player. Yerky Petrolinen, enough is there for the save. Oh, man. This game's given us replays at every, at every chance it can. The save from Demko. Nobody was there for the rebound, though. Our first line has a little bit more energy than they do. 35 saves in the game for Petrolinen. Altshuler loses the draw. Heisken and shot save by Petra Line and big glove save. Solid chance from Heisken and no traffic in front, but the corner was there to be picked. It wasn't though. Top lines are still out. Coaches are letting them go for it. Bowl wins the draw again. Heiskinen for Garachev. Puck broken up by Sizek. Pass is intercepted by Akapov. Heiskinen. Down low for Besser. Back in front for Bowl. Vancouver struggling to find space. Heiskanen for Grachev. It's Yakupov. He loses it to Sizek. Sends it back. Vancouver is there, though. The forecheck has been incredibly effective. Kreider and Dirksen can't get it out. There's finally some space as Tuzolino looks to carry out of his own zone. Eric Tuzolino, uh, the Mike Commodore of our team with that hairstyle. Lowry and Leidecker, great passes. Tuzolino for Leidecker. Shot deflects wide. Lowry. Looking for space. Altschiller finds it. Shot goes wide. And it's what has to be a very tired. I think that's Yakupov still. Strom for Horvat. It was Berchke, I believe. Sven Berchke shot. Catches Petra Line. He's able to make the save. Puck down low. Preston Saugus for Leidecker. He's able to get it out for Lashoff. Drops back for Delisle. Pass for Lashoff. Referee in the way. Lashoff in front. Yes! Oh my god, we got it! The comeback of dreams! With 5.8 to go, we tie the game! We get the winner in overtime of game 7! And it's not over! We are going back to the Stanley Cup Final to play either Carolina 
or Montreal. I don't know who the hell got that goal, and I don't care. But I'm pretty sure they're going to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Lucas Leidecker, our fearless captain. Oh my God, who got the goal? I didn't even see who. I, I didn't even see who got the goal. I couldn't even tell you who was on the ice. Oh my God, who got it? Who was responsible? It was Leidecker. Pass over. I still. Who who got the goal? <laughs> I didn't see who it was. Oh my god, there's our mascot who you've probably never seen before. Well, that was the deflection, but the sauce in front, was it Kreider? I think Kreider's number 13. It was Lowry! Oh my god! Alvin freaking Lowry! Welcome to the Hall of Fame! He ties it, and then gets the winner. What a sauce! From Lashoff, by the way. Look at this. Breaks in behind the defense. Demko over. Immediate shot. Bam. Hits the camera. No, we, we got to watch that again. We got to watch that again just to watch the Whalers fans at XL Center explode. There it is. There's the dudes eating popcorn. Oh my god, this episode isn't over. <laughs> It's not done yet. We are going back to the Stanley Cup final. Oh my god, Alvin frickin' Lowry. We lost three straight games. And it's Montreal. Because how fitting. The two teams that featured in the first series that we've had on NHL 18... Montreal never won a cup. We've won a cup with Hartford. And now the Habs could deny us our happy ending <laughs> and win a cup in the process. We will have home ice advantage in this series. Oh my god. So Dirksen, you get a look at the point totals. I'm not changing anything. Alvin frickin' Lowry, you absolute hero. God damn menu. You can see the menu delay right there. Let me let me take a look at Montreal's lineup. Guys, I thought we were done for. There was like 20 seconds left where we couldn't get the puck out of our own zone. <clears throat> Lowry scores on a deflection and then gets the finish in overtime. And that sets up this cup final against a Montreal team that does feature some former players of ours but I think it goes without saying based on their offense we have the advantage top line of Jonathan Drouin Par Forsberg who was a 7th round steal and a half for the Habs, oh my god and Jesper Faust who's 37 years old second line is Morgan Klimchuk who's having an incredible postseason with Alex Galchenyuk and Oscar Lindblom. So that second line is killing it for them right now. They may not have the highest overalls, but they are getting the job done. Tyler Benson is with Marku Koistinen. Montreal was pretty good at finding steals. Actually, that was Calgary. And former Whaler, Max Jones. Because of course, Adam Ernie with Brett Howden and Kirill Niznikov. The defense. If we fucking lose, guys, oh my god. Mirko Mueller is with Noah Juleson. Second pairing is Louis Papineau with Colin Tham and Mike Riley is with Trent Keith. The goaltender is Ralph Stafford, who unsurprisingly has a 941 save percentage. We have such a massive advantage on paper. It's just a matter of whether or not that ends up meaning anything. 
88, 90, 93, 93, 95, 96. Oh my god, we should. We should win this series. There's no question. It's just a matter. It's just a matter of winning these games. I'm intrigued to see what Carolina looked like, that's for sure. But to be honest, I don't think it matters. Let the series begin. Game one of the Stanley Cup Final on home ice. First period. And we have the 2-1 lead. Lashoff gets the opening goal. Forsberg tied it only for Lashoff to strike again. Continuing that impressive performance in game seven with a two-goal performance in the first period alone. Second period. Oh, my God, yes. Thank the Lord. Sizek and Altshuler make it 4-1. I'm still going to sim. We have a 4-1 lead heading into the third period. Sizek and Altshuler with the goals. Third period, and there you go. Skinner gets the insurance. It wasn't needed. 5-1 final. We were able to get to their defense. We were able to get to Stafford. Lash off with a two-goal night. The 24 save uh, performance from Petroline. And I think I'm getting out of I think I'm getting the hiccups. That would suck. That would suck. But that's okay. We'll fight through. Game one goes to the good guys. Game two. Let's do this. Let's keep this going. Let's keep up this momentum. Game two. First period. And Montreal gets the lone goal, Jonathan Drouin. All right, second period is scoreless. 22 shots to 18 in our favor. We're down one nothing. We're still going to sim. Can we come back and steal this game or at the very least in four or force overtime? And no, we cannot. Klimchuk and Galchenyuk with two goals and Ralph Stafford bounces back from allowing five goals to getting the shutout in game two. And that is very concerning. It's a best of five from here on out, guys. <sighs> game three. Game three. First period here in Montreal. And they're up to nothing. Klimchuk and Faust. Alright. We had four shots that period. Second period. Leidecker gets a goal back. We're trailing two to one. Can we tie this game up? Or outright win it? We at least tied it up. Eric Tuzolino. Alright, thank God. We can't fall behind in the series, man. We can't. Tuzolino tied it after Leidecker got the goal in the second period. That sets up overtime in game three. Come on now. Oh my god, our big players have to deliver here. Overtime in game three of the Stanley Cup final power play chance for the Habs. We're going to have one here on... Oh god damn, we couldn't capitalize though. We're going to have one here of our own. Montreal with a power play. They can't strike. Eight minutes left in this overtime, and we got it! George Delisle. Oh my god. Woo, boy. George frickin' Delisle. He's shown in this postseason he is capable of putting up goals, and that is the biggest goal of his career. Petrolinen deserves credit. 34 saves and a 944 save percentage. A two-point night for Leidecker. But George Delisle gets the OT winner. Leidecker, Tuzolino, and Delisle with the goals. And we have taken game three 
from the Habs. We have that 2-1 series lead. I'm so tempted to make lineup changes, but I'm not going to do that unless we drop this game. But guess what? That's not going to happen. We're going to go back to Hartford for game five with a 3-1 series lead. I am calling my shot. Come on. We can do this. We have the better team. First period is scoreless. 12 shots to four. That's a victory for them to have not given up a goal. Second period, and they get the opening goal. Howden. Howden with the goal. That sets up another third period situation where we are trailing. 23 shots to nine. They have nine shots through two periods and are winning. Oh, my God. I'm going to hit the button here, and I'm kind of afraid to look. Let's do it. Third period. I'm not even looking. I'm not looking. Did we tie it? Oh, my God. We didn't tie it. We won it. Oh, my God. Lash off at Skinner. Skinner loves him a third period goal, doesn't he? Oh, my God. I thought we were so screwed, guys. Oh, I thought we were screwed. They had nine shots. They only had five shots in the third period. I'm surprised they didn't score six goals. It's a 2-1 win, a come-from-behind win in game th uh, in the third period of game four. Stafford was the first star of the game, but it wasn't enough. And the Hartford frickin' Whalers are one win away. <laughs> from their second Stanley Cup. Oh my God, and our first chance to do it comes on home ice in game five. Oh my God, all right. It comes down to this. No lineup changes unless we lose this game, which is not going to happen. This is it. This is the dream scenario that I hoped for. <laughs> and it's three periods away from being a reality. First period of game five. Montreal gets the opening goal late in the period. It's Howden again. We outshot them 12 to 8. Second period. We are on the board. Warren Dirksen. We've doubled them up in shots. We're tied on the scoreboard. Third period of game five. Early power play chance for the Habs is killed off. We're five minutes in. Come on now, please. Halfway through the third period. Nine minutes to go. Make that five power play chance for the Whalers. Come on. 57 seconds left. We're going to overtime. We're going to overtime. We have to watch it. We have to watch it. The cup's on the line. The cup is on the line. I know we wore blue last time. We're we are wearing original Whaler green this time. I went CPU versus CPU, right? Okay, I did. Oh, my God. We are one goal away. All right, everything stayed the same. Beautiful. We are one freaking goal away Next goal wins. Are we going back to Montreal for game six? Or are we winning this right here, right now? Come on. We can do this. We can do this. Faceoff is won by Montreal. Keith for Lindblom. They got that dangerous line out there. Their second line's been their best line all postseason. Saugus tries to kick it to Lowry. Saugus for Leidecker. Our second line, which could very well be our top line. Through the neutral zone. Over the blue line. Into the corner. Back in front. Saugus. Bounce pass off the board for Lowry. Saugus. Lowry finds Leidecker. He's not going to be able to get the shot off. Keith was there. Morgan Klimchuk for Lindblom. Broken up. Lindblom looking. Klimchuk gets taken out. Leidecker's able to find it. Lash off. Through the neutral zone. Looking for space. Drops for Lowry. Windmill to the inside is broken up by Galchenyuk. It's now Morgan Klimchuk over the blue line for the Habs. Pass is broken up. Klimchuk for Lindblom. Space at the point. Riley for Keith. Back for Riley. And it's broken up. Leidecker is having trouble against Galchenyuk. Keith 
battling Lydecker. And there is going to be a hooking call on Lucas Lydecker. The top line got caught. They were out there for a bit too long. Lydecker takes the pen. Montreal goes to the power play. It's McAllister and Shrimp against Faust, Forsberg, and Klimchuk. All right, face off here. Can Shrimp get the win? Yes, he can, but it's right back to Petrolinen, and that will see another face off. So we look at the top, uh, top guys in penalty minutes. Unfortunately, Lydecker is up there. Vancouver's Ruslan Grachev. Uh, still somehow first, despite not playing in the past five games. Same lines are out. Face-off one again. Telkvist for Shrimp. He is able to clear. I just noticed it is nearly second. I mean, it's like nearly picture perfect here. This is going to be a long power play. Jesper Faust carries over. Klimchuk is robbed by Yerke Petrolinen. He flashes the leather yet again. This is a very stressful situation we find ourselves in. Next goal wins. Face-off won by the Habs. Mirko Mueller for Faust. Fam, one-timer, gigantic save from Petrolina. We're struggling to pick up the puck. Forsberg for Mueller. Back over for Klimchuk. That's broken up. Mueller recovers. D to D. Mueller and Tham looking for space. Back up for Mueller. Montreal desperately trying to find space. Mueller takes the shot. Saved by Petrolein and rebound out for Tuzolino. He gets it to McAllister, who clears. Montreal fighting back. The Klimchuk gets leveled at the blue line. Galchenyuk draws it back into his own zone. He's able to find space. It's Jesper Faust along the wing. Drops it back to the point for Mueller. Across for Galchenyuk. Faust gets hit. Telkvist trying to clear. Galchenyuk recovers. Klimchuk. Can't pull the trigger. Over for Faust. Shot loose in front. Petrolinen is able to find it and cover. 44 seconds left. Montreal have three, uh, the top three players in hits from this postseason. It's Dirksen and Lashoff against Drouin, Galchenyuk, and Lindblom as far as forwards go. Galchenyuk wins the draw. Juleson for Lindblom. Drouin. Riley back for Drouin. Across for Lindblom. And it's broken up, thankfully. Delisle's able to recover, and he clears. 30 seconds to go on the Montreal power play. The hooking call to Whaler captain Lucas Leidecker. Galchenyuk through the zone. Lindblom shot. Delisle, it's in a rough spot. Sizek is able to find it and clear. Yerke Petrolinen is holding strong. Is that even an expression? It is now. Forsberg across the blue line. For Montreal, drops back for Riley, takes the shot, glove save by Petrolinen as time expires on the Lydecker hooking call. A screen in front, but the glove was there for Yerke Petrolinen. He did his job and he did it well throughout the course of that power play opportunity for Montreal. Third line against top line, Dirksen, Altshuler, and Kreider. Out for the Whalers, six shots to zero in favor of the Habs, and they win this offensive zone draw. Mueller, though, struggling. Dirksen battling for it, drops it back for Sizek to recover. Altshuler, through the neutral zone, tries to get the pass up. Koistinen was there for Montreal. Max Jones, the former Whaler, over the blue line, takes the shot. Puck is loose. Petrolein in the save. Koistinen recovers. Mueller for Juleson, back for Koistinen. Save again by Petrolein. Oh my god, the whale is struggling to get out of the first gear. Koistinen's having an incredible shift. Kreider, though, able to get the better of him. Over the blue line, he gets hit and will retreat. Noah Juleson leading the rush for Montreal. Along the wing, in front for Tyler Benson. Yerke Petrolinen putting this team on his back. Tuzolino across the blue line. Unnecessary windmill, and he loses it to Papineau. Max Jones... Turns it over for Ulf Pressburg. Fourth line out there for the Whalers. Cristiano Wagner up top to Gostad. One timer goes too high. I'm not sure if Stafford got a piece of that one. Howden, who's had a great series for Adam Ernie, and his shot is stopped by Petrolina. He will pause 
Oh my. This has been something else. Yerky Petrolinen with an incredible performance in this overtime. The Whalers, again, struggling to get out of first gear. It's fourth line versus fourth line. Pressburg versus Howden on this faceoff. And it goes to the Whalers. Telkvist drops back for Gostad. Wagner dumps it in as he hits the red line. And the Whalers are going to get this puck back. There's a battle for it. Papano is able to get it out. He's having trouble, though. The forecheck from the fourth line doing well. Howden able to get it to, Niz to a Niznikov. Niz -niz 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 -niz. As Howden's shot is denied. Stuttering, not stuttering, doesn't matter. Because we have Yerky Petra lining in goal. And he is getting the job done. Montreal somehow gets a favorable matchup. Even though we have last change. First line, a fresh first line against a tired fourth line. Not sure what our head coach is doing. Good check there. Papineau is battling. Gets it to Forsberg. Papineau carries over the blue line. Looking for space. Puck broken up by Pressburg. Wagner able to hold on to it. Back in the Whaler zone. Gostad for Wagner. Telkvist and now Pressburg through the neutral zone. Carrying in for the Whalers as they get a line change. Papineau recovers down low. The four check is there. Copeland for Lydecker. Saugus and now Copeland back on the mid, uh, the halfway boards. We're good. Delisle sends it around. And Montreal will recover. Montreal here. Jesper Faust over the blue line. Tries to drop back. Nobody there and a chance here for Hartford. Lydecker for Alvin Lowry. He completes the move for Lydecker. He scores! It happened! Oh my god, it happened! Lucas freaking Lydecker. <laughs> the Hartford Whalers have done it in the last episode of this series. They have gone all the way. Lucas Lydecker. The chosen one <laughs> gets the cup winning goal in overtime of game five of the Stanley Cup final against the Montreal Canadiens. It breaks my heart in a way to see Montreal lose again in the cup final of this series. But can you believe it? Pierre Maguire, don't respond to that. Oh my god, it happened. The captain. Lydecker gets the series clinching goal. Yerky Petrolinen stands on his head to keep us in this game. And it happened. This is one of those episodes, again, where you wish you had webcam up, but I guarantee if we did, this wouldn't have happened. Yerky Petrolinen, rightfully so, the Conn Smythe winner with a 931 save percentage and an incredible beard Yerky Petrolinen bravo sir what an effort what a performance we we fucking did it we just won the cup on home ice I said before you know what the comments wow my damn thing went dark because I haven't touched the controller you know what I mentioned as far as what the comments are going to say <laughs> But for now, let's just enjoy this moment. As Lucas Leidecker raises the cup in front of the hometown fans, the Hartford Whalers for the second time are Stanley Cup champions. And we did it with this core. I don't even know who's getting the cup next. It should be Alvin Lowry or Petra Line, and who was 43? It's Alf Prestberg, the fourth liner. Alf Prestberg gets the cup. I'm all right with that. He's been on this team for a bit. Next up, it's Owen Kreider. One of the youngest members of the team. Looks like one of the oldest, though. Owen Kreider hands it off. No, he's going for another lap. Why not? You go right ahead, Owen. You do what you got to do. Oh my god, I cannot believe this happened. I cannot believe that this happened. We actually did it and won the cup. 
Yerky Petrolinen. Skate with that thing for the next five hours, buddy. You have earned it. Oh my god. In front of the hometown fans in the Whaler Green. Tuzolino and his incredible head of hair. The Hartford Whalers are Stanley Cup champions. I almost like, should that, should that be the ending? <laughs> A 974, 37 saves for Yerky Petrolinen. And this hour and 20 minute or so long odyssey comes to a close with the best ending we could have ever expected. The Hartford Whalers have won the Stanley Cup. Lucas Leidecker led this team in points and scored the cup clinching goal. Lowry, Lashoff, Altshuler. Oh my god. I feel like Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz and you you were there and you did well and you did great. Oh my god. Petrolina and we only lost five games. Only one shutout. One shutout and it was the first game against the Jets. Incredible. The sweep of Winnipeg. Four games over Colorado. From 3-2 down to winning game 7. 5.8 seconds away from being eliminated. <laughs> Lowry scores and then gets the OT winner. And then in overtime of game 5. Lucas Leidecker snipes it. I should have looked at that goal again and again and again. It's been a while since we've won. We went from two consecutive President's Trophies and disappointments. <sighs> Connor McDavid won the Art Ross and the Hart. Grachev won the Norris. Tuzolino was there. Macaulay, of course, the Con Smythe went to Petrolina, and as did the Vesna for the third time in five years. He just alternates, including beating Stafford in the Cup Final, who won it last year. The Jennings went to Demko. McDavid won the Selkie, the Lindsay, and the Rocket Richard, but oh my god, guys. Did we take home any hardware at the AHL level? I doubt it, even though the team was I mean the team was in more of a rebuilding role. I just like can we can we just can we just look at this? The perfect finale. <laughs> the perfect finale and I know again it's gonna be said keep going have this be the 25 year season because on paper yeah we should be right back in contention but there is no better time to win than right now as we have a fairly big off season ahead of us if I'm not mistaken Sizek would have to be resigned. Saugus, Flood, Lowry. I mean, this is this is it, guys. This has to be right. I know I'd love to see what these guys can do and to continue the journey. But this this is the way. Winning a cup on home ice against Montreal of all teams. Absolutely incredible. absolutely incredible guys ladies and gentlemen that's that will do it for this marathon episode i look forward to seeing what the comments are whether or not whether or not they are in support of the series ending or not i'm still gonna suggest though leaving your comments down below for the players that you think deserve to be eligible for Hall of Fame voting. I just, I cannot believe that just happened. I cannot believe that just happened. We won the goddamn cup. We actually did it. Guys, 
Oh my god, if you enjoyed... <laughs> If you enjoyed this episode, if you enjoyed this series, leave this video a damn like and subscribe if you have not already done so. Links are in the description to my Twitter and my Twitch. Follow me on both of those platforms if you have not already done so. The Hartford Whalers our Stanley Cup champions for the second time. And I don't know a better way to end a series. What what the future holds for this team, I don't know. I don't think we'll find out. But what a magical, magical run that was. I'll catch you guys next time. Goodbye.